Herschel Woodrow Williams, or Woody as he would often be called, was born on a dairy farm in Quietdale, West Virginia in 1923. Williams was the youngest of 11 children and from the time of his birth would show an unbelievable will. Weighing just over 3 pounds when he was born, Williams wasn't expected to make it, but despite the odds, he did. By the time he was 11, his father Lloyd Williams had died of a heart attack. To help his family, Williams worked odd jobs over the next several years before joining the Civilian Conservation Corps. His work with the Corps took Williams across the country to Montana, which is where Williams was when the Japanese executed their attack on Pearl Harbor in December of 1941. As America was finally pulled into World War II, Williams felt the need to serve and chose to enlist in the United States Marine Corps, mainly because he preferred their dress blues to the uniform of the Army. Williams was assigned to the 32nd Replacement Battalion and left for the Southwest Pacific in December of 1943. A month later, he would join Company C before being attached to the headquarters company and participating in the Battle of Guam in July and August of that year. By October, Williams had returned to Company C. In February of 1945, Williams would serve in his final campaign, the Battle of Iwo Jima. As American tanks tried to make the way for infantry, they encountered a network of enemy pillboxes, small, fortified structures that housed enemy soldiers and allowed them to fire on the advancing Americans from narrow openings in the structure. Williams, armed with a flamethrower, was asked to be part of an escort for another American Marine that was supposed to attach explosives to the pillboxes to destroy them. But as they were fighting their way to the pillboxes, every man except for Williams was gunned down. Despite this, Williams pushed forward making his way to the first pillbox, firing the weapon and killing every man inside. Under the cover of just four American riflemen, Williams returned to his company and refueled his flamethrower before repeating his journey to the next pillbox. Over the next four hours, he would make the perilous trek five more times until every last pillbox was incapacitated. At one point, a group of Japanese riflemen attempted to charge at him and kill him with their bayonets but Williams managed to take them out with a burst from his flamethrower. Williams would later say that most of his memory from that day was just blank. He remained at Iwo Jima for the entirety of the five-week-long battle, fighting through an injury he sustained on March 6, for which he would receive a Purple Heart. He witnessed the raising of the American flag on Mount Suribachi, which is perhaps the most iconic image from the war's Pacific theater. In September of 1945, he returned to the United States, and a month later, President Harry S. Truman would present him with the Medal of Honor for his actions that went above and beyond the call of duty during the Battle of Iwo Jima. On November 6, 1945, Williams would be honorably discharged from the U.S. Marine Corps. Williams was dedicated to helping veterans deal with returning to civilian life and handling the after effects of combat stress, accepting a job with Veteran Affairs as a counselor, a position he would hold for 33 years. Williams himself had struggles with the middle toll of the war and cited a religious renewal for helping him through those struggles, and he would serve as a chaplain for the Congressional Medal of Honor Society for 35 years, many of which coincided with his time at Veterans Affairs. Later in life, Williams would gain some fame as the last living Medal of Honor recipient of World War II. In 2012, the National Guard's $32 million training facility in Fairmont, West Virginia, would be named the Herschel Woody Williams Armed Forces Reserve Center, making it the only National Guard facility in the nation named after Marine. Williams sadly passed away in 2022 at the age of 98 years old. He was the epitome of an American hero, and the effects and impacts of his service and sacrifice for his country will continue for generations to come, making Herschel Woody Williams a real-life legend of West Virginia.